come together, accommodated by the, the space in this room. The space contains us, surrounds us. We're all gathered together in this. Without the space, we couldn't be here. There's also a space which is defined by the walls and the, the floor and the ceiling. That's why we call it shrine room. There's a, a framework for that. That makes it a, a useful space. The word contemplation comes from the, the Latin meaning with the templum or in the templum. And a templum is a, an area, a sacred space on the ground or in the sky marked out and observed, watched to see what kind of auguries appear in it, what kind of birds or animals or clouds or shapes. <coughs> What happens within that space? So to contemplate is to watch what goes on within the, the defined space. So just as the room contains our bodies, we use the, the defined space of our awareness. as our templum, a sacred space that is marked out and observed to watch what arises and ceases, what comes and goes within that. Oh, it's very easy within that to get focused on the particular objects and to forget that there's any space there at all. Fixated on the thoughts and emotions, the plans and the memories, physical feelings, attributes of body and mind, personality, life questions. So we forget the space in the mind, just as we can get so focused on the people in the room, we forget the space in the room. So training ourselves to listen to the inner sound, the nada, the nada sound, is a, a way of helping us to recollect the space the inner space within which all of the thoughts and feelings, perceptions, arise, take shape and dissolve. And the nada sound is, is subtle. Most of the time, through our preoccupation with all of the events and experiences of all the days and the stress of our world since birth, we fail to notice it.
But then when we turn our attention to it, that subtle vibration, we discover that it's ever-present. Uh, many different spiritual traditions refer to it in different ways and come up with all sorts of theories or cosmologies as to what it really is. The music of the spheres. The cosmic vibration of the universe. all kinds of different things, whether it's Hindu or Sikh, Jewish or Greek, all sorts of different ideas and theories abound. There's no need to make any kind of big story about where it comes from or what it might mean. Suffice to be aware that it's connected to the the body-mind energy system. It's some kind of derivative of the way our bodies and minds work together. And it arises. It's, it's present. We might experience it as a sound or as a physical vibration. or perhaps visual, depending on what kind of sense base we have developed and built a lot of sensitivity around, that's often the channel through which we experience it. If we've done a lot of body awareness, we'll feel it as a vibration in the body. If we're very visually, graphically oriented, we might be aware of it as a, a shimmering quality in the visual field, the internal qualities of vision. Maybe even a taste or a smell. But whatever way we might experience it, Suffice to say that it's simply a, a natural vibration, an inner sensitivity that we can perceive. just like space is not something that we have to will into being, or that really has a beginning or an end that we can define, so too the nada sound is not something that we can control. We can't will it into existence. We can't make it louder or softer. Unlike the breath, which we can control to a certain degree, I can decide to breathe in or breathe out. Take a deep breath or a shallow breath. Personal will has no effect on the nada sound. 
unrelated to it. Just like space, or the force of gravity. We can attend to it, we can notice it, but my decisions or choices or preferences are not valid currency there. They don't apply. So training the the heart to attend to the this inner vibration, to the nada, helps to cultivate a, a deep receptivity to counteract that self centered controlling habit, trying to shape the universe to our will. But it prompts us, prompts the heart to simply be open to the way things are, to attend, to listen to the universe, to listen to the mind, the body. And then from that listening, through that inner listening, then the heart can more easily attune itself to the way things are, rather than leaping in to change the way things are according to some personal ideal or plan in a compulsive, reactive, habitual way, guided by ignorance, greed, hatred, delusion. Also to remember that there are different ways that we can focus upon the inner sound. We can use it as a simple concentration object, just like the breath. It's a perception, a sanya. So one can narrow the attention to focus exclusively upon that. Consciously excluding all other perceptions and feelings, thoughts, could tighten the concentration. Often if we do that, then we find that the like getting up close to something and putting your ear next to the speaker, the sound can become a lot louder, clearer. And we might discern different frequencies, different layers of sound within there. <coughs> Lower frequencies, higher frequencies. Different kinds of modulation sometimes. So if you do find that, then just aim the attention at the the higher frequency notes. Let those be the the element that you concentrate on. The way the the nada sound works is that since it's connected to the, the psychophysical energy system, the more we concentrate on it 
the more it raises the level of arousal. It brightens the mind, energizes the body. So there's a positive feedback loop whereby the more we concentrate on it, the brighter the mind gets and the easier it is to concentrate. The more energized the body is, the straighter the posture, the clearer the mind. So we find as we, if we develop it as a concentration object, we can sit for long periods, the mind very bright, very calm, very clear, the body quite comfortable. That sound simply filling the awareness, everything else quite at ease. One of the other attributes of of using the nada sound as a meditation object is how easily it works as a, a bridge between concentration and insight. Not even a bridge really, it's more like it represents the the natural spectrum of of attention that is already there. We can, if we wish to develop more of an open awareness and cultivating insight, wisdom, rather than just refining concentration, then we can loosen the attention on the sound itself, widen the focus, broaden it. And just allowing the sound to be there as a a background to all other experience. Almost as if it's filling the space of awareness. Like the air in this room, the light in this room. It fills the space, but unobtrusively, supportively. The light in the room enables us to see. The air in the room enables us to breathe. So the nada sound in the being known in the space of our awareness, rather like the air enables us to breathe and stay alive, the presence of the nada helps us to remember helps to sustain mindfulness, the spiritual life source. We notice thoughts arising and ceasing, other external sounds, someone moving in the room, a bird singing outside, And in between those, around those, behind those, the nada sound carries on. Reminding us of the context of experience. Supporting Satisampajanya, mindfulness, clear comprehension. Triggering that intuition, that insight of this is just a feeling. This is a memory, this is a doubt, this is a plan, this is a mood, this is a passion, a fear. (laughs) 
So in this way, we can be cultivating a simple open awareness, uh, training the heart to rest in that quality of knowing. In a way, the base object of that knowing, of that subject, simply the nada sound. And then within that, other perceptions and thoughts and feelings arise. Take shape, do their thing, dissolve. So it simply helps support the clarity of focus. And when there's nothing arising, no particular thought or feeling, then we can just listen. Listen to that sound. Feel that vibration. And we can also use its presence as a way to support the kinds of practices of reflection that I've been describing. An investigation of questions like, who am I? So in establishing a focus, we can just listen to the nada sound, just let the attention be with that as it fills the the space of our our awareness. (coughs) And then we drop that kind of question into the space as listening to the nada sound and phrasing the question. Who am I? Who am I? And then the same quality of attention, of listening, helps to support that investigation, noticing the space, the shift in the heart after we ask that kind of question. Well, other kinds of investigation, looking at emotional reactions, our fears and hopes, opinions. To focus on the sound, then drop that that statement into uh, into the mind. I want it. I hate pain. Whatever particular angle of this sort of investigation we might be using, the listening to the inner sound can be a a great support for that, helping to sustain a a context and to prevent the, the mind getting lost in random trains of thought, papancha, conceptual proliferation. It keeps it all in perspective. So 
to all forms of investigation in this way, just looking into some particular subject, some aspect of Dhamma or our own life that we we're using the wise reflection quality to, to look at. All of these different kind of things, the having the nada sound as the background, as the support, can really help to keep that fertile and alive, clear, uncomplicated. Also, just its simple presence. It's a very perfect and beautiful symbol in the conditioned realm of of the unconditioned, the ultimate reality, the Dhamma itself, apparent here and now, seemingly timeless, never having a beginning or an end that we can discern. You can start attending to it and, or stop, but you never hear it begin or, or finish. It's not old or young, beautiful or ugly, female or male, tall or short, yellow, red, green, blue, white, black or brown or Nor does it have a shape. It's not square or round. It has no relation to the three-dimensional world. But it's very present. So all of these qualities make it a a perfect symbol in some ways for the Dhamma itself. Also for the attribute of knowing. It's like a a symbol in the objective world of the subjective quality of knowing. Ever-present, energetic, impersonal, edgeless. So that its presence can help remind us, can catalyze the intuition of the heart for that which is genuinely timeless, unconditioned, unborn, can trigger that intuition, recollection of the refuge, Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, awareness, wisdom, truth. and unselfishness. Sangha is that quality of unself-centeredness, virtue, that which is utterly harmonious, blends in with everything. It mixes like milk with water, The nada mixes in with everything. Everything appears within it. It doesn't obstruct anything. So these are just ways of cultivating it as a symbol. One doesn't want to just sort of project all sorts of inflated cosmic attributes, but just to see that these qualities remind us of the deeper reality of of our own nature. Ever-present, energetic. When you notice it, you feel it everywhere. 
nada is everywhere. But when we're busy, distracted, upset, vanishes without trace. Completely invisible. So like the Dhamma is to be seen individually by the wise, by each wise person to know for themselves. If we're attentive, it's always here. If we're distracted, it's unfindable. Just like the Dhamma. Now there are the qualities of another sound is the fact that unlike the breath or the footsteps, you can't lay, locate the sound in space as a dispersed, unlocated quality. This also helps to sustain a, a breadth of, of, of view, an openness of heart. So we train the mind to attend to a single quality but without clamping down on a some kind of localized point so that pervasive unlocated quality that's there in in it as a a perception helps support that realization of uh, unlocatedness the, the Dhamma is not anywhere. Awareness does not apply. It's not related to, to space. So it also helps to, to trigger, to support the intuition that we have of that dimension also. And then just in the act of listening, listening to the nada sound we can't extract any kind of meaning from it there's no message it's telling us it's not saying go forward, go back, be still stand up, sit down try harder, back off eat more, stop now you're a good person, you're a bad person you're succeeding, you're failing, this is beautiful, that's ugly. There's no message in it, no verbal conceptual content. But yeah, we can listen in an open-hearted, clear, uncomplicated way. Just listening attending, taking it all in. 
And we find that the more that we train the heart to just attend, just listening to the nada sound, we also find ourselves able to listen to our own thoughts, feelings, waves of emotion, with just the same kind of beautiful impartiality. Brilliant thoughts, stupid thoughts, noble thoughts, profane thoughts, mundane thoughts, memories, ideas, plans, fears, hopes, passions, blazing insights, glorious poetry, moronic pop songs. We can listen. It's like spinning the dial of the radio. Why should we make anything out of what gets broadcast? The mind just picks it up. Gets relayed through the speaker, but so what? So we find ourselves able to listen to the the content of our own thoughts and feelings with the same kind of loving impartiality. Taking it in, knowing it respectfully, leaving it all alone. That which is wise and skillful, we use to guide our actions. That which is selfish or stupid, we leave alone like a radio station that we just pass over, a news broadcast that we're not interested in. No need to condemn it, destroy the radio, just leave it alone. So we learn to listen to the serious opinions, the important worries, the great plans, the reiteration of unrequited loves, lost opportunities, great achievements, infantile concerns, fussing obsessions, random chattering. Just listen just as we listen to the nada sound. Feeling the process of it. Knowing it. A heart utterly peaceful. Not making anything out of it. It's just the sound of the mind. It's the vibration of the universe. It's like being the chair of the committee, taking in, listening to all the offerings and mutterings and appeals and rantings and cajolings, reasonable statements of the committee members, just attending, listening, being a space within which all of that meets, is known. And wisdom decides what is worthy of pursuing, cultivating, and what is worthy of leaving aside, letting go of. Wisdom decides what is right effort. When asked what is the difference between consciousness and wisdom, Intuitive wisdom, and that kind of transcendent awareness. The Buddha replied, Consciousness is to be understood, wisdom is to be developed. So, learning to listen is like understanding the patterns of consciousness sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, thought, feeling. We understand it. We recognize it arises and ceases. Not self. 
it cannot permanently satisfy. It can't. And wisdom is to be developed. Train, training the heart to listen, to attend, to rest unentangled. 